Today we're going to talk about rubrics and how to assess performance assessments. So what is a rubric? Let's see. So what is a rubric? A rubric is a criterion based, so based on a set of criteria or standards, scoring guide with a fixed measurement scale and description for each score point. Um, there's two types of rubrics. Um, there's a holistic rubric, which gives an overall impression of a student's work with one single overall score. This is similar to what you might see for um, Florida Rights, um, where you get like a one, two, three, four, or five. Um, so you only get one score. Um, it's not broken down by specific different types of areas. Um, or analytic rubric, where it's divided into distinct parts. So I could get a higher score, let's say, on my um, grammar and composition and a lower score on maybe my theme and my content. There's a score for each criterion or each part. Um, we're going to be using an analytic rubric for this um, lab assignment um, because it allows us to assess for understanding. It allows us to give specific feedback for each part um, and it's more formative. It gives us better feedback for students um, and it, um, a holistic rubric is more useful for quick analyses and to give an overall evaluation, but it's not as useful for providing feedback and um, helping students to improve um, or for um, formative instruction for improving our own lessons. So the first thing for deciding on an analytic rubric is to choose the criteria. How do we know what we're going to assess? And um, we want to think about what's important in the assessment, not just what's easy to assess. A lot of times we focus on the things that are easy, such as spelling mistakes or grammar, and it's more difficult to assess understanding um, or content. Um, and we want to think about how to assess understanding. It's on a continuum from more or less naivety or sophistication, more or less in-depth or superficial understandings. When designing a rubric, you need at least two dimensions or criteria for it to be an analytic rubric, otherwise it's just holistic, right? For this project, I'm going to ask you to come up with five criteria. Notice that's a departure from what the textbook says. Popham was asking for fewer, but I think that five is a good number for this class. I really want you to think deeply about the different parts and really analyze um, specifics on how to do this. I mean, at least one of those dimensions should assess the understanding or the um, of the content area that you're assessing. Um, you also need a scoring criteria, so you need the numbers. So let's look. So here's some two examples of how to assess for understanding. Um, and in this one, I only have three levels, just so you can really see um, the different parts. We have everything from expert to developing. Um, for the explanation here, you can be, see for expert, I talked about accurate, co cohesive, and sophisticated explanation versus developing was inaccurate. And proficient was accurate but superficial. In application, you can see insightful versus direct versus misapplication. So you can see how with this, someone who isn't me, someone who didn't write the rubric, would still be able to use the rubric in order to assess this um, a project. The idea here is that you write a rubric that someone else could theoretically use to get the same results that you did. So when you're writing your rubric, you want to think about, could someone else use the same rubric? Have I described things in enough detail that someone else could use it? What I'll say is that writing a rubric can be pretty difficult. It's not something that I usually get right even for me on the first try. So I'll make a rubric for a project, and I have to end up using it a couple of times and revising it along the way before I get something that I really like. So for this project, you're going to create a rubric, um, and you're going to use it, but I know it's not going to be perfect yet, but I want you to think about and write it as best you can, thinking about the things that I'm putting forth in this PowerPoint slide. So here's a full example. I want you to notice quite a few things about this rubric. Um, first, notice that the, there are um, criteria in here. This is what I'm assessing, and I've divided it into several things. Um, in this project, I ask students to classify um, the um, different objects into mixtures and solutions, to explain why they were mixtures and solutions, to present this in a poster, and then to do a self-assessment at the end. Um, then, for each one of these, I gave it a different value. Um, each of the criterion in the highest level, 
That's the most points they could earn. Notice that the values add up to 100 points total. So in your rubric, I want your point value to add up to 100 to make it easy for yourself. And that they're worth a varying amount of points. And this is important. Your criterion are not all the same. They shouldn't all be worth the same amount of points. In my example, the explanations are the most important thing. They're worth 50 points. The most important thing to me is that they really understand why things are mixtures and solutions. The least number of points is on their self-assessment. I'm least concerned with how they evaluated themselves on this project and everything in between. So I want you to think about everything should add to 100, but everything should not be worth the same amount of points. Does that make sense? Um, there's levels. This is um, how well each student did on each criteria. So you need to have criterion and levels. Um, in each level, the first one's zero. So this is a pretty easy throwaway level. If they didn't do that, that part of the project, they should get no points for it, right? If they get zero. Um, the next one I labeled emerging, and this is really someone who did that section but didn't understand it. This is a failing grade. They attempted it. They get 50 points for attempt, 50 percent for attempting it, but they didn't actually get it correct. They didn't understand. And so all I did was take the total number of points. So in this top example, 25 divided by two is um, 12 and a half. So I rounded that to 13. So they got 13 points if they classified the materials, but they did not get them correct. Then developing would be a passing grade. It's a superficial understanding, 70% um, of the total. So like a C-level work here is what I'm thinking for developing. Um, and this is where, with this on-level and exemplary, this is where we could have some debates. Um, for me, I wanted, my target here is a 90%. This is a student who, this is exactly where I would want them to be. This is my goal for students is to be in, at an A, 90%. I have this exemplary because there might be some students who go above and beyond, more than I would expect. So I left a little bit of margin at the top for that perfect student that going above what I would normally expect for um, my students. Um, other people might put their expectations for grade level work to be at about 100%. This is up to you as a teacher and knowing your students and the development level of what your expectations are and also the project itself. So you can decide where you want to put that 100% mark to be. Um, so important things to remember for the lab assignment that's due this week, um, there should be four performance levels. So in my example here, I have five. You only need to have four and one of them can be 0%. Four performance levels, and five criteria. You need to have at least five different things you're assessing. Each square, so if we go back to our example here, each of these little squares here needs to have both a description here and a point value. So lots of people miss points on this assignment because they don't have a description and a point value. Every single square needs to have a description and a point value. Um, and the point values in total should add up to 100 points. Um, and each point value for each criterion should be different, um, matching what's most important in the assessment. So if you have questions about this part of the rubric and the lab and the expectations, please email me and I'll be happy to meet with you in my office or to talk with you on the phone or to answer questions through email. Okay, so when you're thinking about what makes a good rubric, here's questions to answer. So how likely is it that a student could do well on the assignment by making clever guesses based upon limited understanding? So they were able to guess their right way. On the example before, I could, I have a 50-50% chance of guessing mixture or solution without really understanding, but I still wouldn't do well because I wouldn't be able to explain it. Parroting back or plugging in what was learned with accurate recall, but with limited or no understanding. So can I just say what was in the textbook or repeat what was in the lecture without really understanding what I'm saying? Making lots of effort with hard work and enthusiasm, but with limited understanding. So this is the person who makes a beautiful or who makes an in-depth project, puts lots of effort into it, but doesn't really understand the material. Um, I like to think about, okay, so I read um, Huckleberry Finn, and I made a really cool raft, right, because um, he floats down the river, and I turned that into the project. 
Does that mean I understood Huckleberry Finn? Um, probably not. Even if it's a gorgeous raft and I put lots of detail into it and there's a beautiful river along with it, my diorama looks great. Um, that does not represent understanding of Huckleberry Finn, right? Um, producing lovely products and performances, but with little understanding. So I can make a beautiful thing, um, but I didn't actually understand. Um, applying a natural ability to be articulate and intelligent with limited understanding of the content in question. These are our charmers, right? We all know those students who are really good at BS, who are really good at putting on a presentation, but don't actually, didn't actually, you know, like, um, read the chapter. We want to make sure that those students um, are actually held accountable for understanding the material. Um, or how likely is a student to do poorly on the assessment, even if they have deep understanding, but they didn't meet the goals? So I like to say that this isn't a match between the content and the material. So I have this picture of the macaroni. And this is this idea that, like, um, gluing macaroni down on a plate doesn't really represent understanding of a concept, right? It's just uh, an activity. Um, so is the task relevant to the goals? Um, failing to meet the scoring criteria used despite deep understanding. So here's an example. If, um, if I'm getting graded off because I have poor handwriting, even if I understand the content, um, is my presentation poor even if my understanding is deep? So thinking about those ideas for your rubric, those are what you want to be assessing and thinking about your, um, your rubric on. So let's talk a little bit about the assignment itself. Um, so your components, you should have some sort of description of the task. The task could be about 10 to 30 minutes to complete. You can either have a set of directions you would give the, your participant, or you can um, have a written set of instructions, like a handout that you would be giving as an assignment. Then you're going to create a rubric. It should have four levels of performance and five criterion, and there should be descriptions and point values in every box. We've talked about this already. And you should submit both of those to Canvas um, in one file, so two pages. Um, um, that's the easy, that's the, um, instruments due this week. And then next week it's the lab, just so we're looking ahead on what you'll be doing for the lab. Um, again, it's just like our other labs. Um, again, one document. Um, so what latent value variable are you measuring? Remember, you're measuring a performance on something. So your student's ability or participant's ability to do something, right? We're not measuring the Civil War. We're measuring a student's um, ability to create a poster about the Civil War, right? Um, the theory it connects to, in this lab, we're probably using sociocultural theory. So that's that apprenticeship model, right? Connecting to authenticity. You could also possibly use constructivism here if you wanted. Then how are you measuring this? What types of items um, are you using? Remember, we're using a performance assessment here with a rubric. And then how um, evidence of validity here, how, how are we getting validity here? We want to think about authenticity. So um, how is your um, task authentic? And even if it's not that authentic, even if you're having them, you know, create a diorama, think about um, why or why or why not is it authentic? Um, you don't have to say that your uh, measurement is authentic here or has a lot of validity. I just want you to talk about this issue in the lab. So I know that you understand the concept of how authenticity is related to validity in this lab. Um, your instrument itself, um, again, your instrument is the rubric and the instructions you gave. So description of the task and the, the scoring guide, you're going to attach the rubric as your appendix. So just provide a short description, maybe a little bit of a rationale about why you included those criteria. And then your sample. Um, you can only, you only need one participant for this lab. You only need to have one person complete your performance task. Although, of course, if you have more than one, it'll make the next part, the analysis, a little bit easier. So it's up to you. And again, keeping everything confidential here. So I should not be able to identify your participants or participant. Then reporting of the results, um, an overview. So tell me how well your participant or participants did. A table or a chart. Here, if you only have one participant, you're not comparing two people to each other, but you can per compare your participant on the different criteria. So you could create a chart or a table of the different criteria in your lab and how your participant did on the various parts and compare those to each other, which kind of also gives lends way to the analysis. So which parts of the um, 
performance did your participant do better or worse on? And then your implications. So again, your participant does not have to be a K-12 through student. If you had an adult complete your lab, then tell me what you would do differently if this adult was actually a second grader. How would you change what you do as a teacher? If they completely blew the top off of this lab or this project, how could you make it more complex if this was your student? What would you do differently in your classroom? I'm not interested in how you would change the project. I'm more interested in what you're going to do as a result of the results. So think of it as a formatively, what would you do differently in your classroom? And then finally, with that intervention, how does that relate back to the sociocultural model or constructivism, whichever theory you're using for your lab? Okay, good luck. I'm looking forward to seeing the rubrics that you create this week. And again, if you have any questions, please contact me. Bye.